Barb's dad was the first guy I ever saw that did swath grazing years ago, back in the early 70s when I got to know him. And uh, as a young guy, I thought that was brilliant. About 10 years ago, some neighbors would seed enough corn to do their cows for two, three weeks and they'd go on a holiday. And it seemed to work really good. In fact, the more I researched it, and once I caught on, three weeks, why not do it for 10 times three weeks and do it for the whole winter? It sounded like a good idea and that's where it progressed from. Whether it's a time or whether it's a money thing or whether it's a lifestyle type of thing, I mean, look at that. I mean, just ask yourself what you want and which one's going to best fit you. I mean, I can't tell you what's going to be best for you. I can tell you what works best for me. So we've been bale grazing for nine years now. And why we chose this is because it's the most forgiving in the area that we are. We don't know how much snow, how much ice. We've had snow drifts right to the top of the bales and it hasn't stopped us yet in nine years. This year was an extremely warm winter and last year was extremely cold with lots of snow and I've got through it all with very little trouble I found. Last year was a bit more work walking. I bought a set of snowshoes and I snowshoed the whole way, but I got through it and I didn't burn any diesel fuel. You know, I know some young producers who think they've got the edge on the older generation neighbors because they think this way. It's going to be their ticket to, to get in the game and be competitive. Trying to cut your costs and maximize your outputs is one of the key things that you really have to maintain focus on. Even if the feed is the same, the biggest savings is, is they're harvesting it for you. You're, you're not harvesting it for, for them, they're harvesting it for you so much potential to make money in agriculture and so many people don't go after it they don't take it they're just content to sit back and you know make a little bit of money they're meant to be a grazing animal and 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 that's the way you're going to make money with them grazing instead of pouring the feed to them depending on the year of course uh, we were able to extend our grazing um, 80 to 120 days We've ranged anywhere from 40, 40 animal unit days per acre to over 100. We've had 120, I think, was the most we ever had. This group of cattle in the spring will follow me across to a set of corrals with just calling them in a bucket of oats. So it really helps with the uh, animal husbandry and the stockmanship of the cattle too. We just have to be flexible in our operation that we don't get stuck in a paradigm and stuck on doing the same thing. Uh, just because it's worked in the past, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do in the future. It's all about time management here. More than money management is time management. That's why we swath grace. We got to do a lot more things with our kids than most people because we didn't have chores all day long. For us to deliver bales every day to all these cows, I mean, we'd need a tractor and running for eight or nine hours a day every single day, and that doesn't leave a lot of uh, a lot of time for mistakes. Whereas one guy can usually be done in three hours. Ultimately, our goal is to work together on the farm with our kids. Oh, I'm going to get teary. <laughs> okay, without the kids then, that's fine. <laughs> There's no other life. This is the best. We're living the dream. <laughs> <laughs>